Jim Ryan is in Orlando. Jim, set the scene for us. What's going on now? Good morning, McGraw. A briefing is continuing right now. The uh, the mayor, the police chief, the FBI also uh, discussing the ongoing investigation and how things are progressing. Last night at 11 o'clock, the last of the bodies was removed from Pulse nightclub. We're told that 50 people altogether, 49 victims, and, and oh, shooter Omar Mateen himself, 50 altogether, uh, those bodies all have been removed. Nearly all of the, those victims have been identified. Next of kin are being notified, and then the, the names are being published. So it's a meticulous process. It's taking some time, McGraw. The investigation also continues into the motivation of Omar Mateen. Was it uh, homophobia? He did not like gays. He told co-workers as well. Uh, he didn't like blacks. He didn't like Hispanics. And he may have made this pledge to ISIS. So uh, combine it all together, and you come up with a guy who, uh, with a violent past, uh, it ended in a very spectacular way at this nightclub. Yeah, uh, Jim Ryan, we're also starting to hear that the FBI at least investigated him a few times. What's, what's that story about? Yeah, there were, there were several contacts that the FBI had with him in the last couple of years. Uh, he apparently had talked about a, uh, an American uh, a suicide bomber, had contact with that person, apparently had made comments about ISIS that uh, were disturbing enough to the FBI that they did launch investigations, but he had never committed a crime, and so he was cleared during those probes, even able to, within the last week, purchase two guns, a, a, uh, an AR-style, uh, assault-style rifle, and a handgun. Those are the weapons that he used in this shooting. So, yes, he had been under the microscope at FBI, but had been cleared of uh, any wrongdoing and, and turned loose. Yeah. Jim, the attack began at 2 a.m. Saturday night, Sunday morning, but he wasn't shot dead until hours later, right? He really seemed to have the upper hand inside that club. Some 300 club goers, more than 320, 320 or 350 actually, were inside the club. I think for fear of uh, collateral damage or, or you know, victims that were not intended, the police uh, didn't feel safe or, or comfortable in going in and doing anything for about three hours. Finally, at 5 o'clock, an armored personnel carrier, a so-called bobcat, was used to punch holes in the side of the building. That's when people were able to escape some of the uh, the hostages that were being held, and that's how the police managed to get in. Uh, they, they say that uh, that Omar Mateen was one of those who left the building. He still had his guns with him. He engaged the police. They returned fire, and he was shot to death. Uh, there was one police officer who was injured, correct? Well, yeah, there was one officer who, uh, whose Kevlar helmet uh, bears, I've seen pictures of it, pictures uh, of this Kevlar helmet with a, uh, a bullet hole across the front of it. It apparently saved his life. The police chief said a few minutes ago that he's talked with that officer uh, about that. He's, he's doing well now, but uh, he feels uh, absolutely confident that his life was saved by that helmet. Uh, the chief says that 11 law enforcers altogether have been relieved of duty for now while the investigation is continuing. Those are the officers and sheriff's deputies who engaged Omar Mateen at the end of this situation, McGraw. Jim Ryan live in Orlando, Florida. Jim, did he call 911 before he went in? That's what we're told, that he placed this, if not before he went in, then after the first shots had been fired. But at some, some point... During this three-hour span, he made a, a phone call to 911, and during that call, apparently pledged his support to ISIS. Uh, the Islamic State this morning is, is stepping up and, and not outright claiming responsibility for what happened here, but certainly applauding the actions of Omar Mateen, calling him a soldier of the caliphate. So uh, it, that, that seems to solidify somewhat at least his motivation in going into this club. Although we also know from co-workers and friends uh, of his that uh, that he did have this uh, this deep hatred for blacks, Hispanics, and gays. Yeah, uh, and even though he was an IPIS, IMIS, uh, 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 ISIS sympathizer, he's an American citizen born in New York, but there's no real connection yeah. between any anybody sending him here to do it. It's more of a lone wolf type of action, correct? Well, seems to be, and that's what the FBI is, is thinking right now, although they're, they say they're leaving no stern unto uh, stone unturned, according to the FBI agent who spoke a few minutes ago, in trying to find out exactly what his motivation might have been. And they are looking for any contacts that he might have had with people in any terrorist organization. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it appears that he was not uh, directed by ISIS, or that certainly that he wasn't funded by that organization, but... Uh, they want to know whether he had any contact at all with uh, someone inside that group or others. Jim Ryan, live in Orlando, Florida. Jim, be safe. Thanks for checking in.
Thanks, McGraw. 655 here, Big 550.